Hedging is the idea that you're trying to eliminate risk by taking opposite positions in two markets. And people hedge all the time. Uh, people who buy life insurance, what are you doing? You're hedging against lost earnings. If a person passes away, they're generally not going to be earning any money. Now, there are some exceptions. Elvis still does pretty well, even though he died a number of years ago. But most of us who pass away will not be earning any money. So we buy life insurance to cover the loss so our family has some income. You buy homeowner's insurance, and how does that work? Essentially, if your house burns down, you, your policy will cover some of that loss. So you can hedge in the financial markets by using futures contracts. And essentially, what you want to do is you take opposite positions in the spot and the futures market. How does that work? Well, let's, let's think about that. So you have opposite positions in two markets. And those two markets would be the spot market and the futures market. The spot market is the market for immediate delivery. So if you go down to the local delicatessen and you order a sandwich, you take delivery right then and there, that's a spot transaction. You might think of a futures transaction perhaps as going to a banquet hall and arranging for a wedding that might be a year or two years down the road. You've agreed upon the price, you've agreed upon the, um, uh, you know, what, what you'll have, how many guests you'll have, but you're not going to take delivery and you're not going to make the payment until you get to the wedding day. So, well, you may have to pay a week early or so, but generally that would be essentially a futures transaction. So these two transactions, if they're on the same commodity, if we're talking about a bushel of wheat, whether you're talking about immediate delivery or delivery in the future, well, wheat prices are going to move in tandem in the spot in the futures markets. So if you take opposite positions, what do I mean by opposite positions? You're long, long, or you could say you buy in one market, and you're short, or you sell in the other market. And this way, when the price goes up, you'll be making money in one market, you'll be making money in your long position, you'll be losing money in your short position, okay, and vice versa. So if you happen to have a position where you own the commodity, you have a long position, you've already bought it, you take a short position in the futures market. So if price goes down, you'll lose money in, in this position, but you'll make money in the futures market. And that's the basic idea of hedging. So there are a couple of questions you need to ask when you're deciding on a hedge. So let's say questions for the hedger. Okay, the first question is, do I buy or sell the futures? Well, it's, this is dictated by your position in the spot market. Do you own something, in which case you're worried about the price fall, falling? Then you should sell the futures contract. If it happens to be the case that you're a buyer, that you'll be buying this stuff at a later date, well, then you essentially have a short position, so you should buy the futures contract. So, for example, let's say we have a farmer uh, delivering wheat. Now, the farmer doesn't have the wheat right now, but the farmer will be delivering the wheat in six months. So, the farmer has a long position in wheat, the farmer is worried about price, the price of wheat falling, so let's write that down. Worried about wheat price going down, so in this case, 
this farmer should sell a futures contract on wheat. Okay, let's look at another example since we're talking about wheat. So let's say example two. Let's consider a company like Wonder Bread. They're going to use the wheat. They are going to be buying wheat in the future. So they're worried about price going up. In this case, they should take the opposite position. They should buy a futures contract. So they should buy the futures. So the first thing you determine is what position do I take? Am I a buyer or seller? The second question we need to ask ourselves is how many contracts? Well, when it comes to futures contracts, these are standardized. There's a standard size. So the number of contracts will be determined by two things. The size of the hedger's position You know, it makes sense if you have if you have a million bushels of wheat to hedge, you're going to need more contracts than somebody only has a hundred thousand bushels of wheat to hedge. Likewise, someone, if you want to not think about futures contracts, someone who makes fifty thousand dollars a year doesn't need as much life insurance as somebody who makes five million dollars a year, five hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay, maybe five million is a bad example. If you make five million a year, you might have enough in the bank. You don't need any life insurance. But generally, the amount of insurance, oh, let's say homeowner's insurance. Maybe that's a better example. If you have a $150,000 house, you don't need as much homeowner's insurance as you would if you owned a $2 million house. So that's the first thing that we, we need to think about, and that's just common sense. The second thing we want to think about is the relationship between the spot and futures price. Now they're going to move in the same direction, but one may be more sensitive to some variable changing than another. For example, okay, let me give you an example here. Let's say you're doing an interest rate hedge. The futures contract for the commodity that you're using may be more or less sensitive to a change in interest rates than the commodity you're hedging. So you might be hedging a 180 day treasury bill futures contract, but you have to, uh, you may be hedging a 180 day treasury bill purchase, but you have to use, the only contract you can use is a 90 day treasury bill future. So because the, what you're buying is twice as long, Okay, in finance terms, we use the term duration, but it's going to be twice as sensitive to a change in interest rates. The price is going to change twice as much. So in this case, you're going to have to double the number of contracts. All right, another example is, so let's say example two, if you happen to be hedging a stock portfolio. and you're going to use S&P 500 futures. Now if the two of them move together, then no adjustment is necessary. But if you have a stock portfolio, if the stocks in your portfolio tend to go up faster than the S&P and down faster than the S&P, you may need more contracts. If perhaps you have a much more conservative portfolio, a portfolio that consists of utility stocks. You may need less contracts. Okay? In, in 
economic terms or in finance terms, we refer to this as beta. So if you have a high beta portfolio, high relative to the S&P 500, you may need to use more S&P 500 futures contracts. You may have to scale it up. You may need 10% more contracts. You may need 20%, 50%. You may need twice as many contracts. If you have a more conservative portfolio that doesn't go up and down that much, you may need less contracts to hedge your risk. So intuitively, the two things, again, we want to think about do you need a long or a short position in the futures contract? And then second, how many contracts do you need? Well, how big is your position, number one? And what's the relationship between the spot and the futures price? So you'll adjust up or down. So if a standard, uh, if you're hedging a million dollar treasury bill purchase and Treasury bill futures come in $100,000 contracts, you're going to start with 10 contracts. If, you're, if the Treasury bills that you're purchasing are twice as sensitive, the price is going to fluctuate twice as much to a change in interest rates as the futures contract, then you're going to have to double the number of futures contracts in order to, to provide the proper hedge. In another tutorial, I'll show you some examples of this hedging.